Hello, and welcome to Songwriters Spotlight, the Western Mass Songwriters Collaborative Series. I'm Dr. Dan, your host of the show, where we feature Western Mass songwriters who perform their original songs and talk about the art of songwriting. Stay tuned to explore more about music and the tunesmithing that creates it. Our performer on this episode is Marsha Hendrick, a songwriter with a wide range of topics, feelings, and styles. Her songs are humorous, haunting, and passionate by turns. She also has a lot to say about songwriting. Please listen to Marsha Hendrick. The song I wrote um, because I had someone I knew who, it seemed that no matter what situation, he managed to find himself in that was good. He always managed to work himself out of it. And uh, it's like he couldn't really take the good, the good, the good luck. It was, it was hard. So uh, I wrote this in response to that. Not that it's really about necessarily exactly about him, but that's that's what uh, that's what uh, that's what I used for for the beginning anyway of writing this song. Crows are pecking at the corn out in the field. I ought to get down on my hands and knees and join them. Things have gotten tight. I remember what you said, baby, when I left. You wouldn't hang around up on some shelf and you meant it. Said your last goodbye. And it's cold out on the road tonight. Why do I end up leaving? When there's more than one reason to stay Why do I keep on believing Life is better further down the way A man with money at a local bar Kept buying me drinks saying I'd go far in business He would hire me on Well I thought about it some and I turned him down No nine to five beats running around I'll keep moving Keep getting gone Cause that's the job of a full-time vagabond Why do I end up leaving When there's more than one reason to stay Why do I keep on believing Life is better further down the way I got ten more miles to my next destination gonna find some place where I can stay another town where nobody knows me no memories getting in the way why do I end up leaving when there's too many reasons to stay why do I keep on believing Life is better further down the way. I got ten more miles to my next destination. Gonna find some place where I can stay. Another town where nobody knows me. No memories getting in the way. Why do I end up leaving? There's too many reasons to stay Why do I keep on believing Life is better further down the way Yeah, life is better further down the way This song uh, I actually wrote uh, when I was at... uh, the Songwriters Retreat in British Columbia on the Fraser River, which is just a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Um, and I wrote it. Normally what I do is I write lyrics first and then I write the music to go with the, go with the words. But um, part of the assignment for that week was to ta- have a piece of music be, um, be uh, given to us and then to write the words based on the music, which was completely like 180 degrees opposite of the way I did it. So I did it, I was really happy with the lyrics I wrote and they fit really well with the music, but then I didn't feel like I could really use it until I could come up with a different melody, which meant that I actually had to wait long enough to completely forget what the melody was and then rewrite the melody. So it took four years, four years from the time I wrote the lyrics that I came up with the melody. I figured even if it matched by that point, was in the deep recesses of my brain. And uh, this one's called Red Silk Pajamas. There's a blueprint rolled up in the corner. 
Let's spread it out on the floor. The windows are big to catch the sunlight. We'll have a number and our name on the door. There's a fireplace to warm us in the winter. We'll have dogs and cozy old chairs. Down by the fence, there'll be roses and a room at the top of the stairs for my red silk pajamas. Feet on the bed, two by two. I'll have red silk pajamas and you. There's a place for guitars and a Harley and a porch where we'll breathe the summer air. At the end of the day, we'll be climbing to the room at the top of the stairs with my red silk pajamas, feet on the bed two by two. I'll have red silk pajamas and you. Till the lights go out You'll have the best view in town Of my red silk pajamas Feet on the bed two by two I'll have red silk pajamas And you Oh babe, till the lights go out You'll have the best view in town of my red silk pajamas. Feet on the bed two by two. I'll have red silk pajamas and you. I'll have red silk pajamas and you. This one, uh, this one was uh, at. Um, I, I I tended to go to uh, to a lot of songwriter um, retreats and and workshops and stuff. And uh, this song, this song I wrote in Costa Rica, at a songwriting workshop. And the the, the wonderful thing about that one was that uh, in terms of the songwriters they had. Um, they had uh, leading the workshop was Daryl Scott, who's totally amazing, Mary Gaucher, which is, you know, she's just amazing too, and then Beth Nielsen Chapman. So uh, it was a wonderful experience, and I'm still friend. You know, a lot of, you know, I've been to a lot of work, I was at a lot of workshops, and uh, mostly the people come there and they leave, and you don't really develop friendships because you're just there for the, for the week or the few days or whatever. But in this case, most, I, uh, I've stayed, you know, friends with a lot of the people that I went, went, uh, went to on the workshop. It was just such a wonderful experience. In Costa Rica, oh my, my, my heavens, what a wonderful place! So I wrote this um, because uh, I was really missing my partner at that point, and uh, being so far away from, from him, um, let this song, let this song come out. So that's what this one is about. We met by fate or happenstance a life or two ago and tied a lasting thread between the center of our souls. This spin around the wheel had traveled over half its arc when destiny revealed the road that brought you closer to my heart. My life has been an odyssey, a million wayward steps. I sailed in charted waters when I should have dared the depths. I will find my destination if you'll be my northern star. You're a thousand miles away, but you've never been closer to my heart. You give me every reason to believe that love will not be bound by the counting of the seasons of our lives. And when our time has ended, the future is extended by the power of the love that will survive. 
some future morning far away two lovers will embrace who think that through a chance event they stumble to that place each beginning has an ending but their final au revoir will hold a persevering trace of love that brought you closer to my heart you give me every reason to believe that love will not be bound by the counting of the seasons of our lives and when our time has ended the future is extended by the power of the love that will survive some future morning far away two lovers will embrace who think that through a chance event they stumble to that place each beginning has an ending but their final au revoir will hold a persevering trace of love that brought you closer to my heart each beginning has an ending and their final au revoir will hold the persevering trace of love that brought you closer to my heart so you know i write a lot of love songs um the good and bad and uh, uh so the last one was about something that was really good this one not so. You know, sometimes like, uh, love can be more like an addiction than than by uh, you know the meaning of two two kindred souls. So I guess that's what this one is about. I drank from your loving cup, swallowed down what you offered up like last call at closing time you left me wanting more god damn these poison dreams i can't find the ways or means to leave you now i know i should have left you long before It tastes like devil wine, hotter than hell, honey on the vine. I'm falling in love, you're marking time, oh devil wine, devil wine. I thought I'd keep my head. But I lost my heart instead So set me up for one more round Before the bottles dry Oh, liquid fire as it goes down I'm miles away from solid ground And the stars I used to point my way Have fallen from the sky It tastes like devil wine, hotter than hell, honey on the vine. I'm falling in love, you're marking time, oh devil wine, devil wine. Some morning I'll leave you and stand in daylight again. But my lips will be wanting your liquor And my body the touch of your hand Cause baby it tastes like devil wine Hotter than hell Honey on the vine I'm falling in love You're marking time Oh devil wine Devil wine I'll leave you and stand in daylight again But my lips will be wanting your liquor And my body the touch of your hand Cause baby you taste like devil wine Hotter than hell, honey on the vine in love you're marking 
time, oh devil wine, devil wine, devil wine, devil wine. My mother and I had a very complicated relationship. Um, she was an alcoholic and really wasn't that much present during my childhood. And, um, but, you know, she was still my mother. And uh, uh, she, uh, she died in, uh, in 2006. And uh, I was born in Montana. And um, where she wanted her ashes to be buried was back in, in the town that, that uh, she was born in and grew up in, which is Harleton, which is the county seat for Wheatland County in Montana. And um, it's uh, just, uh, just to the east of the Gallatin Mountain Range, which is just like incredibly beautiful. And, um, but uh, a lot of open space in Montana. And uh, so this is a song that I wrote actually before me and my siblings went back to Montana um, and had, had a small service at, at, uh, in the cemetery in Harleton. Uh, and I sang this, I sang this song at, uh, at the funeral. I'm heading west on 94 into mountain time Towards the red of a setting sun in a big Montana sky for ten long years I've been away from sagebrush and kin. It took my mama's dying to bring me home again. Where the mussel shell winds beneath the cottonwood trees and the sight of those mountains brings me to my knees. I know there will always be room enough for me and mine. Across the Wheatland County line Mama loved her whiskey But whiskey did her wrong It stole her days long Before her memories were gone The older I got The more she slipped away But any anger I have left I'll bury here today where the mussel shell winds beneath the cottonwood trees And the sight of those mountains brings me to my knees I know there will always be room enough for me and mine Across the Wheatland County line Grandma and Grandpa lie beneath their stone under wide open spaces the prairie embraces another daughter coming home where the mussel shell winds beneath the cottonwood trees and the sight of those mountains brings me to my knees i know there will always be room enough for me and mine across the Wheatland County line, across the Wheatland County line. Okay, so this song um, is really, you know, blues. I, this is my, the only, my only blues. <laughs> and uh, it just, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, it's about how, um, you know, we all know how, how our life is going to end. It's going to end. You know, we, none of us can, can, none of us are going to be around here um, forever. And, uh, but uh, it's kind of like, you know, that how, so what I feel is we should all seize the day that we've got and the days that we've got. So this is
ain't coming It won't come for me Black train coming It won't come for me Wolves are at my door Got the devil by my side If I see that train Gonna run and hide Yeah, black train coming But it won't come for me Black train coming Coming round the bend Black train coming Coming round the bend This world is sweet as honey, Lord I don't want to die I can't live forever But I'm surely gonna try Yeah, black train coming But it won't come for me Black train coming Hear that lonesome whistle blow Black train coming Hear that lonesome whistle blow If you want to get to heaven Gotta hit your knees and pray I'll take my baby's loving Over heaven any day Yeah, black train coming But it won't come for me Black train coming Pass that whiskey bottle around coming past that whiskey bottle round and when you get to heaven well those streets are paved with gold but if there ain't no whiskey then heaven's too damn cold black train coming but it won't come for me black train coming it won't come for me Black train coming It won't come for me And wolves are at my door Got the devil by my side If I see that train Gonna run and hide Yeah, black train coming But it won't come for me Yeah, black train coming But it won't come for me Well, Marsha, thank you so much for the music. It was really wonderful. Some of my favorite songs, I don't mean some of the, my favorite songs that you do, but just some of my favorite songs, just really nice. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I like the way you take us places emotionally and geographically. Uh, Wheatland County line just transports me right right there. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, yeah, so, so, I mean, a lot of my songs aren't autobiographical, and then that one really was, you know, about a very, very specific place, and uh, a place that I love, actually. You know, Montana is just such an amazing country, state, and uh, just, uh, just beautiful, and uh, a lot of, lot of memories of my childhood. Mm. Yeah, well, growing up in a city, it's hard for me to imagine growing up in Montana, but, uh, you know, yeah. it's neat. It's, it's, uh, and I actually, I, I grew up really pretty much in Massachusetts. My, my father came east because he was doing graduate work at MIT. And so, uh, of course, you know, the family moved. And, uh, and then as an electrical engineer, there were certainly a lot more jobs around Boston <laughs> than there were in Montana. So that's where we wound up staying. But we'd go back every summer ah. and uh, see my grandparents, see my, all my relatives, cousins who I, you know, we were, we were like this little this outpost in, in Massachusetts. Yeah. But in my heart, Montana was home, even though I was spending pretty much all of my life in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. 
So when did you start writing? I started, well, I started writing poetry when I was in high school. And it was, you know, I was write poetry. And, um, but it wasn't until I was 40 that I really started, I write, started writing songs. And, um, and I would, I was playing the guitar, you know, and finding songs that I like and, and singing songs that I liked. But the songs that I sung, I liked them, but they weren't really saying exactly what I wanted to say. And so then it was like, well, I guess I just, I'm just going to write. I'm going to start writing songs. And so I did and got really, really involved in it and really, um, really tried to do the, my best job in terms of putting that out and, and, uh, and presenting myself through my songs uh, in a performance. Can you think of the first song that you think was a, a real a hit, a keeper? Uh, yeah, the first one that was really, that I still play, uh, though I didn't today, but uh, was um, Better Class of Guy. That was one of my first songs that, uh, that I really think um, has stand, stood the test of time for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and brings, brings some humor into it. And, and uh, I do write a lot of songs that can be, can be considered to be, uh, to, the emotion that it involves is like humor and good, good feelings. And, but a lot of sympathy, right? It's about this, this, this person who's just having really terrible luck with men. <laughs> Really, <laughs> like not not doing well at all, and it's like a better class of guys. Like the the it's like, it's like okay, you know, you stood me up, but I've learned something because I'm you know I'm I'm actually getting dumped by a better class of guy, and so it was like it's a it is a good song. It's lessons yeah. learned, right? But optimistic. I think I think of that as an optimistic song. Yeah. Um, so, so, who are your your songwriting inspirations? Uh, well, there's a, there's a few. I mean, uh, um, a Bob Dylan. I mean, just you know the way that that Bob Dylan uses uses language in a song is really not not like traditional in terms of like song crafting, but it's a lot more like poetry put to music. Mm -hmm. it, but just in the way you know the images that he brings up and the the, uh, the way that he can he uses. Um, uses language in a way that, that we don't normally think of things and use of metaphor and use of, um, of symbolism to actually drive home the message and, and, and evoke emotions is just wonderful. So Bob Dylan, John Prine, I mean, just what an amazing songwriter he was. And just, uh, just the way that uh, everyday, everyday life comes through in his songs. And uh, Buddy and Julie Miller, who are amazing, amazing songwriters, um, uh, and uh, and I got into uh, country music a lot in the 90s, and so I was listening. I was listening to country music a lot of the times, and, and country music song writers are just amazing in terms of their craft, and that's what they do down in Nashville is they write songs. And uh, John Don Schlitz, who is a truly phenomenal songwriter, and anybody who uh, you know you could look up what songs that he's he's written. It's just it's just mind-boggling how many and uh, what really impressed me about Don Schlitz's songs is the way that he can make a song be sung by by whoever in conversational as if it's a conversation and nothing's out of place there's nothing that that like hits you wrong because oh somebody wouldn't say it that way it all just mm -hmm. falls right into place and he does it and tells a story and in three and a half minutes, and it's just like it's just phenomenal the way that that uh, the way that um, the way that his songs are put together. Um, and he said, you know, his songs are sung have been sung by so many people. Um, uh, if if all he wrote was the Gambler, he would have his place I know, in well, the Hall right, of Fame. The Gambler, right? Yes, but like, um, boom. Uh, yeah. you say it best when you say nothing at all. Yeah. yeah, that one, man, what a song, yeah, <laughs> yep, so, and, um, yeah, so, and, and plenty of others, too, but that, that uh, I really, you know, just, like, in terms of looking at a songwriter and looking at the lyrics, for me, it's all, you know, I'm very lyrically driven, and looking at that and saying, look what they did, it's <laughs> just, like, yeah. just, like, amazing, so, yeah, so those are, those are big so, uh, inspirations. What you just played for us, um, a lot of 
you know, relationship stuff. Um, and Good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, but do you have other topics that you like to write about as well? So. Um, uh, yeah, there's actually, the, uh, it, and not so much a relationship. There was a song that I wrote called, uh, about Joan of Arc that I, I did as a part, again, a part of the songwriting um, group that uh, uh, workshop that I attended where it was write a song from the perspective of somebody else, which is normally what I do. I may, ta I may, I may speak in the song in the first person, but it's not, it's not really about me necessarily. Maybe sometimes it is, and there's probably, I mean, obviously there's got to be something of me in the song or else it wouldn't connect. But, uh, but I thought, okay, um, so I'll write about a historical figure. And Joan of Arc was such an amazing amazing historical figure. And then to be able to um, research all of the details of her life as far as we know it, and then be able to translate that into a song and, and present it. Yeah, so that, you know, but stories. I like stories. Mm -hmm. I like telling stories, my own and other people's. Imaginary people as well as real people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you attended a lot of workshops. Um, what is it that you like about the workshops? It's the opportunity to really, uh, for me, it was um, working by myself when I was writing by myself. Um, I mean, I would write something and, and not really know, you know, like it wasn't really gelling and not really know why. You know, that, that whole thing about having somebody else be able to give feedback on what works in a song, what doesn't work in a song, and also learn, like from people who have done this for their living as a craft, mm -hmm. and that there are, it's a skill set. And like with anything, everybody, every, I think everybody in this world is creative. We're born creative. We, we would not be people if we weren't creative. You know, that's, that's what we do. We, and actually human beings remake their environment. That's how we, you know, that's how we do it. And, and so we have, we have music inside us. We have um, art inside us. And then it's how do, you, how do you bring that out? And so uh, learning the craft of songwriting is all about how do you take something you know, that you want to say in a song. And it has to do with maybe you overheard something or there was a situation where, where somebody was really, you know, um, there was some emotion involved in it. And, and you want to be able to take that and translate it into a song and be able to, to put people in the shoes of somebody else through music and through lyrics. And um, so you take it, and it's really like starting from something really specific. Like, there's, here's, here's a situation. And it happened to somebody, maybe, right? But here's a situation. And then say, what is it about that situation that really makes me emotionally connect to it, right? It makes me emotionally connect to it. And then how do you take that specific thing up to that universal emotions, understand what is the emotion that really is really embodied in that situation. So, and then, and then take it from the universal. And what is the best way to describe that in particular, in a particular story that really illustrates what that emotion was? So it's going from a specific to a universal to then down to particulars and do it in a way that really pulls the whole thing together. So that when I'm singing that song, what the emotion that, I'm in, that, that is really coming back to me from the audience, they're really with me in terms of the emotion that I wanted to convey in the song. And that can be any emotion. It can be humor. It can be uh, grief. It can be, you know, like caring for somebody. It can be, you know, echoes of what are all of the emotions that we have as, as human beings. But how then, how do, we, how do I be able to put that into a song that allows other people to feel that as well? Which means that I can't get really, you know, all hung up in being 100% truthful all the time. It's like, what do they say? It's like country music, it's three chords and the truth. And the truth does not mean literal truth, like this actually happened to somebody on this day. All those, you know, it's like some songs of mine, like uh, Wheatland County Line is about, about, truthfully, about a very particular place. But in reality, 
I was writing as if I was, I was attending the funeral, but I wrote it really before the funeral. I wrote it before it happened about what it would be like to be going to that place with the ashes of my mother. And so for me, it was about the emotion and then writing about a real place, but not necessarily as it actually happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that song, Ophelia, that, that you used to play a lot. And there were times when I wasn't sure I'd be able to listen to the end of it. I, I know. would have to, like, leave the room. Yeah, that one's a hard one. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. And that one actually is the other song that I wrote, really in particular to, um, to where my mother uh, grew up in Harlotton, Montana, um, and where my, her parents were still there, and we'd go back every year. And we would... Um, we would be pretty much, you know, it's a small, you know, this is, we're talking small town here. There are not a whole lot of places to get into trouble there, although we could. And um, the, uh, us kids would leave the house. And the only thing that we were told is pretty much, you can go anywhere you want to, but don't go near the river, which was the Muscle Shell River. Being a kid of, of like independent mind, I said, well, okay, well, what, you know, why can't I go near the river? So I'm going to go near the river. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going to do that. And looking at the Muscle Shell River, you'd look at it, and the surface, it's not, you know, it's not small, but it's not like a raging river. And I'd look, I looked at it, and I said, you know, it's really hot, and that river doesn't look that bad. I bet I can, I can, sw I can jump in. I can swim that river. Not a problem. And so I jumped in. And um, I could not believe how fast that current took me. It just took me because it wasn't much on the surface, but down below, it was a strong, powerful river with a powerful flow. And I was just swept along. And if I hadn't actually been able to grab a branch and haul myself out, you know, still as I was still near, near the bank, I don't know where I would have wound up. So that was a lesson for me. And so I, what I did was I translated that into the song about, and really, so this wasn't, you know, it wasn't a real occurrence. I didn't go there with a friend. The song is about going with a friend. And, and the, song, the person who is singing the song, who's, the, who's telling the story, talks about, you know, it looked, you know, we thought we could do anything, right? We were kids. We thought, you know, they said not to go here, but it looks great. And I said, I can swim to the other side of this. And then I get in, the, the song, the, the singer of the song gets in, and then the friend follows. I survive. The friend does not. And then living, you know, how do you live with, you know, as a child, things happen when you're a child. And things happen all through our lives with unintended consequences. And then being able to live with the consequences of something happened that was a tragedy, and how do we deal with that? How do we deal with the tragedy? And sometimes we deal with it well, and sometimes we don't. But, you know, they're a part of our life. And so the song is about that, and dealing with being able to, to like, uh, put people into a situation, really with empathy for someone who was a child wound up causing, in their mind, the death of a friend and having to live with that for the rest of their life. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, not, a, it's not an easy song. I didn't do it today. It's, like, it's not no. an easy song to listen to. It packs a lot into a three-minute song. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, let's see. So, when you, when you sit down to write, uh, you're very focused on lyrics. I am, yeah. Yeah, because me, it's, so the story is everything. And... Um, and then uh, if I get, it's like the story, and when you're writing a song, it ha it's a story for me, right? It has to be, um, it has to fit into a particular rhythm, and it has to, eventually, when it's a song, it's going to have a rhythm, it's going to have a rhyme scheme, because generally speaking, we expect songs to rhyme at places, and, uh, but it also has, and it has a structure, and really, um, being schooled in like the way you write the net, like like writing country songs, which are very much story songs, and it really fit very well with me, is that 
I, I would start with what we call the hook, which is like, what is that, that major phrase in the chorus? Not the whole chorus, but there's a phrase like the culmination in one line. This is really what the song is about. And so when you get to that, everything kind of resolves to that. And say for Wheatland County Line, the song is about a very particular place, Wheatland County Line. And so that is the hook. And then what happens is then I, I come up with those, right? Come up with a hook. And it's like, and then, so, and the only way they get written is if they like don't leave my head. And it's like, you know, write this, write this, write this, and it keeps, it won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> in order to make it go away, I have to write the song. And then it's like, okay, what is the song? That hook is about something. What is the story that's behind that, that line? And how does that story progress over the three, three and a half minutes, four minutes, whatever, not very long, and, and at the most, like three verses <laughs> and a bridge, or like two verses in a bridge, three verses in the chorus, right? And so how does that actually then, and, and it's like with any story, when you're writing any story, it's got an arc. It has a beginning, it has a point where, you know, the culminate, you know, like, you know, major things happen, and then, you know, some kind of resolution at the end. And so it's like, how do you fit all of that in three and a half minutes? And so that's, uh, so yeah, so I start with the hook, and generally after that for me, it's like what comes is the is is kind of works. It works at the same point. And it's like here's the here's the start of the story. I'm writing a verse, and I'm also at the same time because once you have words, then for me the melody follows the words. What is the melody that really belongs with these words? How does this how do these how does this melody fit into a line, and how does the how does the word the rhyme scheme really fit mm -hmm. with the you know with the melody and then okay then like okay and then there's got to be a difference between the verse and the chorus so some different chord pattern has to happen and kind of fit it into that framework but it's really for me it's the words started the words that carry it through and then the music has to follow along and create the prosody which is that marriage between the words and the melody is prosody of, of the song. So I, I take it when, you, when you're, you're thinking of the words, right. that, that they, as you say, they, they match some kind of a... a right. A natural, a natural melody goes with those, right. so at least in my head. Right. There's a natural melody that goes with those words. And it's like our conversation, our conversation is actually a melody. We don't speak in a monotone. We speak in a melody. And so any particular phrase has a melody that goes along with it, which normally when we're speaking does not have the, the, like the, the peaks and valleys that you really want to have in a melody to make sure that people's interests are, are held by both the melody and the words. Mm -hmm. But they can't be so far apart that they don't even really match up. So then it's finding, finding that marriage between, here's the conversational um, rhythm, right, of the line. There's a, there's a rhythm to the line. How does that then fit into the rhythm of a melody? What are the notes in the melody? Where is the high point? The high points, you know, what, what is it I'm trying to, um, trying to emphasize in a song and generally go up in, in pitch? At, at the points that you're trying to, to emphasize, and then what chords are going along with that? When are you using major chords? When are you using minor chords? What does is, what is that whole rhyme, uh, rhyme and chord scheme go? So, but it all, for me, it's really driven by what the words are. Yeah. Did any of the songs that you performed here go through a major edit? They all do. They all did? They yeah. all do. Yeah. Right, yeah. I know some people are able to just sit and just write a song and there's the song. That has never worked for me. Never, maybe, uh, I, although, I, you know, admittedly, I'm kind of um, OC and a perfectionist. So it's <laughs> like, it's like, first, it's like, so um, generally, I go through many drafts of songs. And one of the th things that I do after I've pretty much got the framework, you know, I've got the, I've got the lyric, here's the lyric structure, here's the, here's the verses, here's the chorus. It's all kind of fitting together. But then I look at it. And especially, I look for words that I can take out. Take out that don't really have anything to do with conveying the message that the song is about, 
and they're kind, they're, they're kind of like the, the fillers. So I, I, I wind up going through and taking out a lot of the fillers that are there that don't really add anything. And all it does when you're singing a song, it just makes you have to sing more words. And it makes it harder to sing when you're singing more words and also gives each word less of an impact. And so it kind of, you know, it kind of thins the mix. So they take those out and then do a lot of revising. Revising of words, you know, come up with a phrase and say, well, that sounds pretty good. And then look at it and then, then wait, right? And then go through some time and say, and days, right? And look at it again and say, now this could be, I could say this better. I could say this better. I could say this better. And really the whole process is then getting to a point where I say, okay, I'm ready to perform this. And at that point it's like, yeah, I can perform, you know, it's, it's done. I can perform this. And, but a lot of times what happens for me is for the first Especially the first time that I play it out, it's number one, it's like, how is this landing with the audience? Am I getting a, because I'm paying attention, right, to how, what is the audience response to different parts of this song? Because it's like an energy that comes back to me. And I can tell, right? I can tell. It, at least I think in my head I can tell. But anyway, it's, it could be also like how... How am I feeling when I'm actually singing this song? Am I doing a good job of presenting what I want to say? And is the song really working? And then I go back and revise again. And sometimes abandoned at that point, saying, okay, I played it once, but it's not working. I'm going to leave it. And I write a lot of songs that just never see the light of day. Never. They never get to the point where I'm going to perform them. Um, what do you advise uh, songwriters to do when they're new songwriters or, or experienced ones? Uh, what do you advise them to do? Number one, write a lot of songs. Write a lot of songs and just because it's a muscle memory for both the both, you know, your, your the way you approach a song, it's a muscle memory and you get strong, you create a stronger muscle memory the more you do it. It's like you're playing music, right? You get better at playing a guitar the more you play a guitar. And then it becomes, there's parts of it that just become automatic that you're not thinking about all the time because now you've baked it into the, you know, you've baked it into the cake that you have. And so writing a lot of songs is really important. And also, uh, if you're a songwriter, especially if you're starting out, expect to write a lot of bad songs, right? I mean, we don't expect in a lot of places that what we do, that the first time we do something, that it's going to be successful. When you think of like learning how to ride a bike, right? When you started out learning how to ride a bike, you did not just get on, you know, your three speed or your 10 speed and just ride. You're there in a very small bike. Somebody's hanging onto the handles. They're helping you along and you're learning how to get your balance. And then it's a process. It's the same with writing songs. And so give yourself the freedom to make mistakes, to write songs that you go back and say, well, that's crap. But at the same time, not look at that and say to yourself, I can't write a good song because that's not true. Right? You don't say to yourself, I will never be able to ride a bicycle the first time you get on a bike and, and you can't do it. We don't do that to ourselves. We don't need to be that, that kind of hard editor, right? That critic that says, and that voice that tells us that we'll never be any good. We don't have to listen to that voice. We can just be free writing a song and just put the words down on paper. And then at some point, at least for me, you know, it's important to bring the editor in and not the editor that's the, that's the mean critic that says, well, this is crap. You just better throw this away. It's the editor that comes in and says, well, let's take a look at this. Do these words really work? Do you really need this particular word right here? That the, is that really, you know, do we need that? When you say just, do you, what does that really, you know, what are the word, what is the word meaning when you're using it? And, uh, and let's see if we can, we can um, like buff it up a bit. And so that, that's a really important step. And to, to not allow ourselves to, number one, be free to fail, to make mistakes, to try the skill and get better at it, but at the same time, then bring to the table what you know is actually, you know, like your editor eye and being able to say, you know, this really works. I like the way this is going. 
this doesn't, I can change it and understand that change is a part of, of um, being creative. What is, what is your um, basic approach to stepping away from the music? You, you mentioned time. Uh, are there other things that you use to give yourself some distance so you can make good judgments? Yeah, I record myself. I record myself singing the song and, um, and then listen to it with an audience ear as opposed to just being there singing my song, which it's easy to get involved in your, in, you know, inside yourself and thinking, oh, yeah, this is just doing exactly what I wanted to do. But when you turn it around and actually listen to it as somebody in an audience, it's amazing how much it shows up in terms of what then, I, you know, it's what is working, because that can happen to working and not working, what needs a little bit more work. So I, you know, it's part of my extensive, you know, editing process is to record it, listen to it, change it, record it again, listen to it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, are there other things that you, uh, you think about in terms of songwriting, your songwriting? I guess um, it's like trying to be authentic when I'm singing. And so that what I'm singing about is, a, is believable coming from me. That there is, that I have something that I'm connecting to in the song that allows me to convey emotion out to an audience rather than just hear some words I'm singing. You know, there's mm -hmm. a difference, right? Oh, I like the way this sounds, I'm just gonna sing this. Which is, to me, almost like cutting yourself off from your own emotions. And if you're cutting yourself off from your own emotions, it's hard to actually let those emotions flow into your audience. So it requires some vulnerability. So I guess, you know, for me, songwriting is about, is about authenticity and, and, and an ability to be vulnerable. And you mentioned earlier empathy. That's empathy, a big piece of it. right? Empathy is a big piece of it. You know, we all go through life um, with, you know, a lot of hills and valleys, right? That uh, none of us is untouched and unchanged by the things that happen to us, trauma, whatever, and um, and so we all can connect in some way to. To, to like things that have happened to other people. And so what I want to do is just to bring a viewpoint in front of an audience and say, connect to this and allow that to happen. Okay. So that's um, a lot of perspective and information uh, <laughs> on songwriting. It's really helpful. <laughs> you learn how to write songs. Yeah, well, you do write songs. <laughs> you do write songs and they do connect. <laughs> so, well, yeah, you know, it's like, it, but, it, you know, I, it, it's like a lot of people say, oh, I can't do that. And, you know, we're the, we are the biggest barriers to our own growth and creativity because we are the ones with the internal critic that tells us we can't do it, but we can. We all have messages. And, you know, one thing uh, right now, I'm, I'm really a lot more, I'm, I'm doing a lot more painting than I am songwriting, but it's really good. And, and, um, and there was, somebody brought up a quote of Martha Graham, from Martha Graham, who, um, I mean, not, not a painter, not a songwriter, but, you know, a choreographer and a yeah. dance, incredible. And um, the quote was about Martha Graham saying that, Everybody's got a dance. Everybody's got something. And in terms of her terms, in terms of creative, creative for, force, you know, we are creative people. And the thing is, we, our creation comes from who we are, who we are, what we've gone through, and what we bring to the table. And here we are at the present. And... Um, and I'm really paraphrasing because I tend to use a lot more words than most, you know, it's like the quote is like this big and I'm using a lot of words. But uh, it's about if, if you don't dance your dance, nobody else is going to because your dance is unique. And so if you don't do it, it's never going to be done. 
which I think is, is like, okay, you know, you can do it and everybody can do it. Put your voice out there because if you don't, nobody else will. Nobody else is going to write your songs. Yeah, well, you've done a wonderful job of doing just that. <laughs> and really appreciate your uh, sharing that with, with our, our audience and me. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, Dan. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, Marsha Hendrick, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and you're welcome. I will say, though, uh, one other thing. If you want to find me, and I have yes. two, I have a couple of CDs that are out there from not, not recent, quite a while ago, but uh, you can find me on Spotify or um, okay. iTunes or wherever you get music under Marsha Hayden Hendrick as, uh, as my name. So okay. I think we're done here, and it's been a real pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this. Oh, I'm enjoy it. It's been a, a great episode. <laughs>